Hi friends, welcome back to ARC Tutorials. We are continuing with our series of top interview question and answers. Today in today's episode, we will cover NoSQL series. What is NoSQL database? How do you use it and how do you crack your interview? Today we will learn all about the top interview question and answers asked upon NoSQL database. Let's get started with this tutorial. Before we do that, I request you to kindly subscribe to my channel to keep supporting me. Also, if you have any questions, queries, doubts, please feel free to drop them in the comment section. I will be happy to help you for free. Thank you. Let's get started. The first question is, what is NoSQL? NoSQL is a concept where the data is not connected with the relational databases. Unlike in traditional relational databases, the data is related in primary key foreign key relationships, whereas in NoSQL, it is not connected directly. It is an advanced method of database where there are no tables used to manipulate data. NoSQL is designed to support high performance, big tables and graph databases. Do you what do you understand by NoSQL in databases? The database management systems, which are highly scalable and flexible, are known as NoSQL databases. These databases allow us to store pro and process unstructured and semi-structured data, which is not possible when we make use of RDBMS or relational database management systems. NoSQL can be termed as a solution to all the conventional databases which were not able to handle the data seamlessly. It also gives an opportunity to the companies to store massive amount of structured and unstructured data in real time. Who uses NoSQL? Almost most firms which deals with an unstructured data or large, huge amounts of data makes use of NoSQL. The next question is, list some of the features of NoSQL. Some of the features of NoSQL are, using NoSQL we can store the large amount of structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. It supports agile sprint, quick iteration and frequent code pushes. It supports object-oriented programming which is frequent and is also easy to use. It is more efficient, it has a scale-out architecture and it is cheap or instead of being expensive. It has a monolithic architecture and can be easily accessed via different programming interfaces. The next question that is asked is, what are the advantages of NoSQL? So using some of the advantages of NoSQL, using the new node concepts, the database of NoSQL can be extended to the set limit. Low commodity hardwares take this point as an advantage NoSQL databases are used to store a massive volume of information. Now, big data and recently posted user reviews utilize the concept of NoSQL. There is no expensive administration required to monitor the databases of NoSQL. NoSQL can be easily installed with cheap economic mileage in terms of spending money on complicated systems or licenses. The next question is, what are the disadvantages of NoSQL? Some of the disadvantages of NoSQL are, since it's a relatively new technology of database storage, there are not many other systems which are ready to integration yet in the leading market. The previously built systems have the support available round the clock, but the NoSQL systems are comparatively less, but it is getting matured. Since NoSQL is a relatively new technology. It's not supported by some of the older and you can say legacy systems. How does NoSQL database management system budget memory? So this is an important question. It is asked in almost all interview questions. The node which manages the data in the NoSQL database store is the replication node. It is also the main consumer of the memory. The Java heap and the cache size which are used by the replication nodes are very, very important factors in terms of performance. 
by default these two things are calculated by NoSQL in terms of the amount of memory available to the storage node. Specification of the available memory for a storage is recommended. The memory will be evenly divided between all the all the replication nodes if the storage node hosts more than one replication node. So this is little bit detail about at the architecture memory level, but I suggest that you prepare these notes, take notes of these and be prepared for this question when asked about the budget memory or the replication nodes. The next question is explain Oracle NoSQL database management system. The NoSQL database management system is a distributed key value database. You can think of it like a JSON structure as well. It is designed so that it can provide highly reliable and scalable data. It makes the data storage available across all the configurable set of systems, which functions as storage nodes. In this database system, data is stored as key value pairs, or you also know this from JSON that it is always stored in key value pairs. The data is always written to a particular storage node, and these databases provide a mechanism for the storage and retrieval of data. So when you when you are asked about a, that database management system, especially NoSQL, these are the important features you should be talking about in terms of key value pairs, in terms of how the data is stored and distributed. The next question is, what are the pros of a graph database under NoSQL database? So the advantages of using graph database are these are tailor made for networking applications. And a good example are the social networks that are available in the market or that we use today. They can also be perfect for object oriented programming systems. Now on the same lines, what are the cons of a graph database? In what conditions you should not be using graph database or what are the disadvantages of graph database? Since the degree of interconnection between nodes is high in graph database, so it is not suitable for network partitioning. Also, graph databases don't scale out well in NoSQL databases. So again, you give an example of applications that you have built or used and that say that how they were uh, easy to scale or not easy to scale that would add a lot of value to your interview. So now the next question comes what are the different type kinds of NoSQL data stores that are available? So most of these NoSQL data stores that are available are across in almost most NoSQL uh, database management systems but there are four typical or main important types of stores that these NoSQL databases provides. The first one is the graph key value store. It is used to simply store the data storage in keys, which is key and a value. You can also think of it like a JSON structure, which has a key and a value. Then you have something called column family store. It's a sparse matrix system. It uses rows and columns as keys. Then we have graph store, which is used in case of relationship intensive problems. And finally, we have something called document storage like MongoDB, where we store hierarchical data structures directly in the database. So go through these four, think about use cases or apps where it can be suitable, and you should be able to crack your interview with easily with such question. The next question is, what is CAP theorem? So uh, most of these databases that are designed are based around CAP theorem. So what is a CAP theorem? It was proposed by Eric Brewer in early 2000. In this system, there are three main attributes that we should consider when considering a distributed database. The first one is the consistency. The second one is the availability. And the last one is the partition tolerance. So consistency in this, that all nodes see the same data at the same time. That's called consistency. Availability means it gives us guarantee that there was a response for every request to the made to the system about whether it was successful or not. And then there is something called partition tolerance. It is the quality of NoSQL database systems in which the state 
of the system will work even if the part of the system has failed or has gone wrong. So this is used especially in terms of disaster recovery and in such use cases. All right, so let's move to the next question. What do you mean by eventual consistency in NoSQL stores? So eventual consistency in NoSQL means that when all the service log logics have been executed, the system is left in a consistent state. For achieving high availability, this concept is used in distributed systems. It gives a guarantee that if new updates are made to a given data item, then eventually all accesses to that item will return the last updated value. This is the single most important feature. So go through this list again. In NoSQL, it is provided that in terms of base and RDBMS, also known as acid properties. NoSQL databases provide client applications with guarantee of eventual consistency. Some of the NoSQL databases like MongoDB, Cassandra have advanced configurations also that you can use. Let's move to the next question. What do you understand by the polyglot persistence in NoSQL? While storing data, it is advisable to choose multiple data storage systems so that the system allows us to store various data in our future. This is a safer type of data storage system because we do not want to risk on single data storage system. This type of storage where you store in multiple data storage systems is called polyglot persistence in NoSQL. Now, coming back to the last few questions, write down the differences between NoSQL and RDBMS. So, NoSQL does not follow any order for its data format. That means it can hold good for unstructured or semi-structured data as well. When it comes to scalability, NoSQL is more better and more scalable, whereas RDBMS is less scalable. For querying of data, NoSQL is limited in terms of querying if there is no join clause present in NoSQL. Whereas querying can be used in RDBMS because of its relatively structured data of primary key and foreign key setup. The difference in storage mechanism of NoSQL and RDBMS is that NoSQL uses key value pairs for storage, whereas RDBMS will use tables for storing and data and storing data and its relationships. This is very, very important question. I suggest that you go through this list again and make sure you are reading the, uh, the differences between NoSQL and RDBMS really, really well. So please refer to this list again and again. Make sure you understand all concepts and drop me comments if you have any doubts. So the last question for today's in this particular part is, what are the differences between SQL and NoSQL database? So SQL works with relational database systems. It's vertically scalable. Systems are fixed and not flexible. Failure in hierarchical data storage. Any complex queries can be used via procedures or triggers. In NoSQL works with the distributed systems and it is horizontally scalable. Systems are dynamic and flexible in nature. Perfect for systems which have hierarchical data storage. And NoSQL is not suitable for complex queries. That brings us to the end of part one of the series of NoSQL. And I recommend you please go through this list again so that you don't have any doubts. And at the same time, if you have any queries, any doubts, you need any information, please, please drop in your comments. I'll be happy to help you. Having said that, please do, do not forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting me. I look forward to interacting with you soon. See you in the other side of the tutorials. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you again. Bye.